guys, welcome back to the channel. It's Yvonne from Ginger Chick Rehab. I'm so glad to have you back. And yes, I am still working on Christmas. Yep. So I am bringing you parts of my kitchen and parts of my living room. And yes, next week, hopefully I'll have the whole house decorated. And I can bring you an all over tour. So I just want to share bits and pieces of how I decorated, how I styled some things and some of the things that I made to keep everything simple. Yep, here's the reason we are late to the game of showing any of Christmas decor because we have been scheduled for months upon months to get new flooring put down in our top level of our house. You know, it's just a waiting game. So, and then you have to decide, you're like, oh, I had a coffee bar here. Do I want to cover it up? Do I want to bring it back in? Because you're just so happy to see this new flooring. As I work on the two shelves above what was our coffee bar, I may bring it back in because of course I want a place to display my thrifted funds. I want a place to display my Christmas. And yes, yep, we have some vintage thermoses going into our decor. Just happened to run across these at a actually an antique store that was um, going out of business. So I was happy to find them. Actually, I did put them in my booth when we had our open house and they didn't sell and it was a God week moment because I kind of wanted to keep them for myself. Now comparing this to the basement of minimal decor, this will end up being a little bit busier just in this area because of all the little fun little reds that I'm adding a pop of during the holidays. I usually don't decorate with red, only during the holidays. And so all these little thrifted finds, some of the videos I made for you, like those little spice containers with the little bitty trees on it. I'll try to remember to link that if you had not seen this. But yeah, are you like me? You just keep kind of playing around with it until you find a way, uh, a look that you were just happy with. So yep, this was at the moment where I am keep adding things to these two shelves. These two shelves are only going to be able to hold so much. And I'm like, okay, I'm going to bring back in what was a bookshelf that we turned into a coffee bar. Even though I'm not going to be putting our carrig back on it, I'm still going to use it for display because who doesn't love extra areas, especially during the holidays, to do some displaying on? I really still want to be able to keep my normal item, everyday items that I have on these shelves, like these little ceramic pottery containers that I have thrifted. So yep, we'll just bring this coffee bar back in and then I'll play around at figuring how to style it. So with deciding to bring this back in, I have four shelves that I can now decorate. Now, when I did my basement and showed off my ironstone, somebody asked, "What? how do I know that it's ironstone? Well, it is actually usually labeled on the bottom of it. There's just something about adding red book stacks, just simple red covered older books that just fits right into my decor. I'm not sure that Glenn quite fits into my decor, but he is a cat. As soon as you turn your back, if there's a cubby space, there he is. So keeping with my old scale and this little vase, I, I don't think this is ironstone, but it definitely fits in. I like the uniqueness of it. Just some simple greenery. I have a load of greenery, so luckily I don't usually have to buy any. Every year as I'm changing my decor around, I can pick what I want to use. I just love the simplicity of the white and then doing the pop of the color. So in this area, I'm adding probably a lot more red than I did in my basement area, but I definitely just love that little, just little pieces of greenery like this when I'm out thrifting. If it catches my eye, yes, I will pick it up. I really don't like to pay full price for greenery. And I had just thrifted, I will call it thrifted because the booth was 75% off. We had just went on Black Friday and I'm like, oh, 75% off. And then me personally, I like to flip my books over so you're not reading the title. And then you see the vintage, the air, the age of what the pages have done over time. 
Now, did you all see me make these cute little spool Christmas trees that were just so simple and easy? And I knew exactly in my decor where they would fit into. Don't you think they fit in really well? Just a simple little touch of that greenery and that little rusted star. We have a couple more areas and now we're going into my living room and yes this is the big transformation i don't know about you all but i am so over carpet and having to clean it all the time so this is that forever flooring that should last this house a lifetime i just absolutely love it and the color is barrel oak came to picking the color it had everything to do with this area right here i love my palette wall I love the floating shelves that Chris made out of pallet wood, so I needed something that would coordinate, that something was that was very neutral when it came to a house. So for me, when it came to decorating, I just, I feel like our space has changed oh, this year. So really trying to think of what would make this look this is the fun. You can do what you do every year if you want to, or you can change it up year to year. Or like these beads, you can see these beads at Walmart and think, oh, I want to add them into my decor. I know that black is not your normal Christmas color, but they sell it now. And I definitely, that is my color I like. So I'm loving my salvage pieces of wood and even these bottle brush trees and these little glass doorknobs. Oh my goodness. It's really going to come together even though I go into that thrift store and I say I do not need any more Christmas but look at look at I found these blocks these Merry Christmas blocks I got a pop of red now on the shelf I absolutely love it and 309 yes please which then made me go into my greenery stash and here I've got some bright green that matches those bottle brush trees I've got they have some red berries that's going to coordinate with what the blocks are and so now I like I said I'd like not to take my decor down if I can help it and just add to it for Christmas okay don't turn me off yet <laughs> once you see this black tree I know you're probably all like that is Halloween what are you doing I could not help myself it was a black tree and I definitely look at look at I can cut out little Oh my goodness, look at the little snowflakes that I cut out using my Cricut to decorate it with. You know what that causes if I have those black beads of garland along where my entertainment center area is, then I need to make a couple more snowflakes to fill in that area now i did try to make tiny little ones for those trees and oh yeah th that was way hard to fold anything like that so that's why i decided to cut them out with my cricket so now this is another one of the tiktoks that somebody has done a wonderful job explaining how to do paper snowflakes so this is just your regular old cardboard paper card stock and so you just fold it accordion style one way and then the other way until you've done the entire piece of paper. We need to fold so where it has been folded, you fold those in. Can you see me pushing, holding the outer and then pushing down with my finger? This is going to give it that bendability, that bending of looking more like a little snowflake. So I'm going to do the one side and then you flip it over and make sure when you're bending that you're doing the same, same direction when you're folding them in. Then after I get both sides done, then I'm going to fold it back into the accordion it was, and then I'm going to tie off the middle part. Not only does the tie hold it in place, but then it also gives you something to be able to have it hanging from. Now I want that raw edge of where I folded in those top slats to go in, so I want my hanging to go in the back. And now we're using some double stick tape and then you want a piece on each side because this is strong paper so that'll really give it a good bond you could use hot glue if you want but she was using double stick tape and i'm like okay 
And then when you're lining that up to get that double stick tape together, you want to start off that top. You want to make sure that your top of your snowflake is matching up. So then after I got those even, then I can go ahead and get it stuck together. Now this one is a bigger one, so I'm going to have to make another one for the bottom. But the smaller ones, um, depending on what size that you make, you can just use the whole thing. But this one ended up being a, a bigger one, so I have to tape it two together. I'll show you the smaller ones that I just made a little bit smaller one. I took a quarter section of that paper and just cut it long way, ways, you know, the cardstock that's just the regular sheet, folded it the exact same way, tied it off with the paper, double stick tape on both sides, and then, yep, this one will be able to fan out and make one complete snowflake without having to put another piece on. So yep, I could, you could cut little holes or a little whatever you want, but I just wanted them simple. So I hope you enjoyed some of me sharing some of my how I decorate, why I decorate, and just keeping it simple. And don't you just love that there are these screen savers now? So if you don't have snow in your area, or you do have snow like we do in Michigan, but it's just something peaceful about watching a snowfall. So yep, check out YouTube. That's not even my channel, but I think it's absolutely gorgeous. So thanks again for watching and hopefully next week, yeah, I'm hoping on next week I have my whole house decorated and I will share it all with you. So thanks for watching guys.